In this video, we're going to look at making sodium nitrite with the chemical formula NaNO2, and we're going to use sodium nitrate NaNO3. The difference between these two is obviously just a single oxygen. The other difference is that you can buy sodium nitrate relatively easily. To find pure sodium nitrite, it's very, very difficult. You can buy um, seasoning salts that have it in there somewhere in 6 to 7% for seasoning meat, but you cannot find pure sodium nitrite typically in the United States for sale. So that's one of the reasons we're making sodium nitrite. Removing that single oxygen from sodium nitrate means that we are reducing the sodium nitrate. Obviously, if we're adding an oxygen, we're oxidizing something. So if sodium nitrite were to become sodium nitrate, we would be oxidizing the sodium nitrite. There are multiple methods to do this. Most of them involve creating a lot of heat in order to release that oxygen. Um, some of them include lead, aluminum, and carbon that initiates an exothermic reaction which then releases the oxygen. We're eventually gonna to have to melt the sodium nitrate. Its melting point is 586.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 308 degrees Celsius. The sodium nitrite has a melting point of 520 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're pretty close and 271 degrees Celsius. These above here, I'm gonna be using carbon as it seems like the simplest one. And I've also done this before in small amounts. So we want our sodium nitrate plus our carbon, which I plan on using charcoal, plus some heat will initiate a whole reaction that's exothermic when in the end we'll end up with NaNO2, sodium nitrite, O2 oxygen. Some carbon does combine with the oxygen, so we end up with CO2 and the fire from the exothermic reaction. Now, a lot of the oxygen that's released here ends up getting combined with the carbon because it's mixed in right away, just initiating a very, very uh, hot reaction uh, with a lot of flames and fire and smoke. The materials for this are NaNO3, sodium nitrate, we need 60 grams carbon, which I'm going to use charcoal. I'll start out with 15 grams. It's probably going to be too much, but it's just a starting amount. We need a stainless steel container. You don't want to use iron or any other metal, especially aluminum, because it can get involved within the reaction itself. So you really want a stainless steel pan and you want a torch, like a propane torch is good. In our methods, we're going to take our stainless steel pan here, put our 60 grams of sodium nitrate in there and start to heat it from both above and below here. We need to reach a six, 586 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not easy to do, so I plan on using both. Once it does melt the uh, sodium nitrate here, then we're going to add our carbon a little bit at a time, maybe three to five grams at a time. Eventually, the heat, particularly from the blowtorch here, will start a reaction that becomes very exothermic, and it takes off on its own and continues to burn until all of the carbon is gone. So even though this looks like a pretty dirty mess when everything's burned up, you uh, actually have your sodium nitrate already produced inside of that. So you want to take some distilled water then, pour it in the pan, dissolve everything up really good. It'll look like uh, a mud puddle, honestly. And then you want to go ahead and uh, filter it. As you filter it, all the bad solids stay behind in the filter paper and the water and the sodium nitrite will drip through here into this flask. Once you've collected all of your sodium nitrite in this flask, uh, I plan on pouring it out into a large glass um, Pyrex dish and just drying it over time which will leave behind pure sodium nitrite crystals. That's how we get our sodium nitrite not mixed with any other salts in its pure form. Let's go do it. 60 grams of sodium nitrate, 15 grams of simple activated charcoal. Transferring the 60 grams of sodium nitrate into a stainless steel pan. A quick view from the side here what's happening. I have my hot plate, stainless steel pan, Sodium nitrate inside there, aluminum to protect anything from flying about, and I'll have the fan running, sucking up any smoke. I've just turned on the heat, so we need to wait for the sodium nitrate to melt. I had to use a blowtorch to help this get to the uh, 586 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that it's pretty much melted, I'm going to add the charcoal here, just a little bit at a time. I'll need the blowtorch to get this going, I think.
Looks like a mess, but hidden in that mess is our sodium nitrate. Well, here it is cooling. You can hear it cracking as it cools off sometimes. Um, what I'm going to do is the stuff closest to me here, I'm going to wash out with water. Just spray it with the pan on the side to get rid of any sodium nitrate that was there that did not get converted. So we end up with just what's over here. I would venture to guess where the sodium nitrate was spread pretty thin on the bottom of the pan here, how I'm holding it, that it did not convert. So that's what I was talking about earlier. I'm going to spray this, kind of hot still, but that's all right, along here just to dissolve. I'm going to lose some sodium nitrite, but I'd rather do that and have a purer product. Okay, we have a clear demarcation. Again, sorry about all the fog there, but from the bottom down, I'll get rid of all of that with a paper toweling probably, but from halfway up, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be all sodium nitrite. A simple step. It's very soluble in water, sodium nitrite, so that should be enough. It already loosened from the pan very easily. I don't want too much water because that means later we have to evaporate a lot more, but I might have to. We'll see how this goes here. I'm hoping this is enough. So I ended up heating the distilled water a bit just to get the last bit of sodium nitrite dissolved here. I'm going to transfer it to a 500 milliliter beaker, let it cool down, and then we'll filter it. Transferring this to the beaker. And I have some distilled water here again to uh, just rinse out whatever remaining nitrite there might be in here. The solution's cooled down most of the way. Certainly enough, I'm going to start to filter it here. And of course, I'll be back when I'm done. And we're done. I'm going to remove this here. It's nice to get all that sludge out of there. And here's our relatively clear sodium nitrite. You notice it has a slight yellow tinge. Well, in real life it does. And um, sodium nitrite can have that, which is always encouraging. Before you're done, when you have some evidence that things are going to turn out okay. I'm going to add the uh, solution with the sodium nitrite in it. to this Pyrex pan. I chose this open Pyrex dish rather than a beaker because scraping the crystals off of this is gonna be a whole lot easier than if they were down deep in a beaker. Here's our dried sodium nitrate. And it's on there good. I've done this before, but in much smaller quantities. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to work on this for a bit. Part of the problem, as we mentioned, is sodium nitrate is quite hygroscopic. And uh, it happens to be raining today. So I'm going to have to do this as quickly as possible. So I don't want to spend much time videoing it. I just want to get it done. I ended up using this razor blade, which worked really well. So it came off uh, actually a little bit easier than I thought it might. Just chop it up a little bit. I'm going to gently tap it now into this 500 ml beaker here. All right, so here we have it, our sodium nitrate. We started with 60 grams of uh, sodium nitrate, and I'm going to weigh this and see what our yield is. All right, let's see. Yield of 38.18 grams, so just over 50%. To finish off this video, I'm going to take the sodium nitrite that we just made and mix it with hydroxylamine hydrochloride. And if this is sodium nitrite, we should develop some bubbles pretty quickly. You can see it's clouding up there, and that is a lot of small bubbles forming. And now they're coalescing into larger bubbles.
and now even bigger bubbles. Eventually they'll get large enough, they'll detach and come to the surface, which they're doing right now. And we pretty much have our final proof here that we made sodium nitrite. Time once again to check out the crystal structures of the sodium nitrate and nitrite.